Okay, we have here today another integral. This one's from MIT 2022, number 12. We have the integral from zero to one, square root one minus square root of x dx. Okay, I've got a lot of different ways to do it, but I think we'll do is we'll take two methods at random and we'll just do it. So my first method will be, I guess, kind of more straightforward. Let's do a u substitution on this whole part right here. So we'll do u equal to square root one minus square root of x. And just because the derivative of that seems like a mess, so let's solve for x. To do it, first square both sides. What you get is one minus square root of x. Of course, I'm dropping absolute value. Notice our x values are between zero and one. This is always positive. Rearrange this, square root of x equals one minus u squared. Next, square both sides, we have x equal to one minus 2u squared plus u to the fourth. Go ahead, we get our x isolated. Take a derivative, we get dx is going to be equal to minus 4u plus 4u cubed du. Okay, now we can substitute, come back here. When we plug in 1, this thing's going to become 0. Plug in 0, and that's a 1. Now this here, we have u, and then our dx value is going to be minus 4u plus 4u cubed du. Now let me clean this up all in one step. We can distribute in the u, but also what I want to do is reverse the sign in order to reverse the bounds. So basically, if I reverse the bounds, that's like bringing a minus sign out front. We bring it back in. So what we're going to get is this part is going to be minus 4u squared. We reverse the sign. We get 4u squared. And then this is going to be minus 4u to the fourth du. Integrate real quick with power rule. We have 4 thirds u cubed minus 4 fifths u to the fifth from 0 to 1. Okay, now clearly when you plug 0 in, that's going to be a 0 for everything. You plug 1 in. We're just dealing with two fractions here. All that's going to be left is 4 thirds minus 4 fifths. We can get a common denominator of 15, just kind of doing it like so. So then what's going to happen is we're going to have 20 from this term minus 12 from this term all over the denominator of 15. Put that together and for my solution on it, we just get 8 over 15 and that's it. Okay, now for method number two, what we're gonna do, I just rewrote the integral without changing it in order to use the beta function, particularly this special version of the beta function that we don't use that often. So this formula could be hard to remember, maybe not that familiar. This form of the beta function might be a little more unfamiliar. If you didn't wanna use this one, you could just do a u substitution on this part right here to get it into the more familiar form. That's a fine way to do it, but in this video, I just wanted to use the formula that we don't see as much. So in order to do this, we just need to get our problem to line up with this. Notice I created this x right here, and it's fine because this right here, this is just zero, so this whole thing's one. So we didn't change it, and then this is just taking it out of the radical and writing it this way. So now lining this up, the exponent right here, that'll be our starting point. This n value in the formula, that's just gonna be one half. Now notice there's an n out front of the integral. So to have this work, we need to create this one half. And so that I'm not changing it, we'll multiply in two. So we just have a one out here. Then for the c2 value, that's gonna be this exponent in red here, three halves. Basically I just forced that to happen. The square root's one half, three halves minus one is one half. So this is gonna be the z2 value, one half. The only thing we don't have is this z1. So we kind of created a little equation right here. So from this, it's, it's a little confusing. We subtract it off one, so we're saying this red one is equal to this part. So that red one is equal to n z1, but we know what the n is. That's just one half, so we're saying one equal to half z1. Solve for that, so then the z1 value is just going to be two. And then from here, we just need to plug in. We have our beta function. We have to, don't forget, we've got this two out front. So what this is gonna become is it's gonna be two times beta function, plug in 
2 for z1, 1 half for z2. And then to calculate this, this is just kind of shorthand. The formula for this is actually just gamma of z1 times gamma of z2 over the sum of the two values, gamma of z1 plus z2. Oh yeah, and sorry, I messed up the z2 value. I don't know how I did that. I have it clearly over there in red. So the z2 value is just gonna be that value, three halves. So now coming over here, and then for this here, we also want this to be three halves over here. My mistake, my bad. So now using this, we go ahead and simplify. We have the two out front, then we're gonna have gamma of the first value, which is two times gamma of the second value over the sum of them. You put those together, we have gamma of seven over two. Now to simplify this, we can use a couple formulas. First of all, if we have gamma of n, actually let's do gamma of n plus one, that's better. So for gamma n plus one, putting that into factorials, that's the same thing as n factorial. So then for gamma of two right there, that's gonna be one factorial, which is just one. So basically we can get rid of that right there. Another gamma function that's gonna help us out where we don't need to have an integer for this, we can use gamma of, we'll just say z plus one, is the same thing as z times gamma of z. Same kind of property, just reducing by one. So then using that on gamma of seven halves, you can reduce it to five halves times gamma five halves, and then just apply that one more time on five halves. So then this is gonna become Reducing by one, it's gonna be three halves, gamma of three halves. And actually, before I put it back, let's multiply that out and we get 15 over four, gamma three halves. So now we'll put it back. We've got the two up front. We'll have gamma of three halves here. Then let's flip this when we put it back because it's in the denominator, so we can write it as times four over 15 and plug this in here. This is all for this value right here. But then we get the same thing here and here, cancel that, multiply it out, and for my final solution on it, we just get eight over 15 and that's it. Okay, there you go, good one from MIT 2022. Thanks everyone for watching, have a good day.